as I watch Wimbledon and, and any tennis tournament, because I'm an avid tennis fan, one of the amazing things about you know players like Djokovic and Murray is that they force their opponents to win the point more than once. Uh, so what I mean is, you know, their opponent will hit an amazing shot, you know, that looks like it's going to be a winner, but somehow Murray or Djokovic are able to keep the ball in play. Um, and whereas, you know, other players might be able to get their racket on the ball, maybe they'll be able to get the ball over the net. Um, but Djokovic and Murray are able to not only get the ball back in play, um, but they're also able to get the ball back in play and stay in a position uh, to which they're not out of the point. So it's one thing to run down a ball in the corner and hit it across the court um, and continue running off the court and then all your opponent has to do is tap the ball anywhere uh, in bounds and they're going to win the point. It's another thing to put the ball back over the net and be able to get back somewhere towards the middle of the court to play the next ball. Um, so that's what I mean is, is not only do they take away the winner uh, in which, which it would be against most players, but they take away the winner and are able to get back into the point um, you know, and not give up you know, a winner on the absolute next shot. And so to put it in, in basketball terms or my terms, uh, that their opponent has a small advantage. So when they hit what looks like it's going to be a winner and Djokovic gets his racket to the ball and Murray gets his racket to the ball and they put it back in play, uh, the opponent should have at least a small advantage, if not a big advantage. Against most players, it's going to be a big advantage because all they have to do is put the ball in play and they're going to win the next. They're going to win the point um, on their next shot. Against uh, you know somebody like Murray or Djokovic, they should have a small advantage uh, and be able to keep them running. You know, sideline to sideline, sideline to sideline, and never allow them to get fully back in the point. But they're so good and so quick that oftentimes they take away that small advantage and they and they return the point to neutral. Um, and then when it's neutral, they tend to have the advantage because they're able to get back on top in the point. And so from a basketball perspective, I think this is how we can describe great defenses. Um, so I think great defenses make you uh, win the point twice or make you create a shot twice. So once you get you run your action, you get some kind of small advantage, they're able to recover and take away that small advantage and force it back to neutral and force you to do something else. Uh, you know, so teams that switch well are able to do this because traditionally we view switches as creating a mismatch. But if you switch and the offense isn't able to exploit that mismatch, they may have a small advantage, but you're able to keep the game basically at neutral. Um, where you're forcing the, the offense to shoot over you, forcing them to do something else to create an advantage. And so defensively, you're able to take away the action, uh, the first action that they're trying to do, you know, let's say a simple ball screen, um, and you don't give up an easy shot or a quick shot out of that action, um, and you're, they're not able to exploit the mismatch either by going into the post or taking the big uh, off the dribble on the perimeter, uh, you've basically negated that advantage and you've created a neutral situation. Um, you know, other times, you know, exceptionally long players are able to help all the way into the key and still take away that shot on the perimeter, um, which, you know, you're, you're giving them a small advantage on the kickout and then taking away that small advantage and forcing them back to neutral. So the offense is having to create multiple open shots on a possession, and that's one way that I think you can uh, recognize a really good defense is, is a defense that forces the offense uh, to create more than one small advantage before they're able to get a big advantage, or a team that's able to force multiple small advantages and never allow the offense to get to a true big advantage. Um, to me, that's how you can you know, define a great defensive team. And so I think in some ways, offensively, we help defenses be better than they may be because we hold the ball. So watching, um, you know, some of the D-League action, uh, you know, players catch the ball and they have a small advantage, let's say a closeout running out. 
they're not going to shoot the ball because maybe it's too quick in the shot. And, you know, the commentators, you know, keep criticizing players who shoot before there's five seconds left on the shot clock. Okay, maybe they're not a shooter or whatever. But rather than attack the closeout, they hold the ball. Now that closeout gets back into position and we're back to neutral. So the offense had already done something to create a small advantage. And the defense, because the offense held the ball, the defense rotates back and they're back to neutral. Now the offense has to do something else, and they have to do something else. Um, and so to me, this is kind of like what happens with, uh, you know, a Djokovic or a Murray who are able to force you to win the point more than once. When we hold the ball offensively, we force ourselves to have to win that possession more than once. So if our goal, which I believe our goal is offensively, to create a big advantage... How do we create a big advantage? We exploit a small advantage. We keep the ball moving until we get that big advantage. But if when we have a small advantage, if we hold the ball, well, we've already created, we've already essentially won the possession once. We created that small advantage. All right? But now we're going to hold the ball. Now we have to create a second advantage. We have to win that possession a second time or a third time. Um, and so I think when we do this, we make defenses better than they may be if we really exploited that small advantage and forced it, forced the action, you know, forced help, forced rotations, kept the ball moving until we got the good shot or the big advantage that we want. Um, so I think, again, when we look at defenses, we want to look from a standpoint of can we uh, negate the small advantages? Can we take away the big advantages? And can we get the possession back to neutral? Once we're beat, can we get it back to neutral? To me, I think that's an effective defense. And then offensively, we want to look at don't force ourselves to win the possession twice. Once we win that possession, once we've created that small advantage, we keep the ball moving um, and we take advantage of it. We don't allow the defense to get back to neutral. You know, or as in the case of Djokovic or Murray, you know, we don't, when they're out of position, okay, we have to take advantage. We can't continually be winning points, uh, you know, having to win a point two or three times against somebody like Djokovic or Murray because they're just going to overpower most of their oppositions. Same thing in basketball. Against a good team, once you create that small advantage, you have to exploit it. Especially when there's a shot clock, you can't expect to win the possession multiple times. Once you, once you win it that first time, you've got to exploit it, take advantage, create that good shot.